Now that we've learned how to install WooCommerce and have configured parts of our store, it's time to add in some products. Let's head back into the WordPress dashboard to see how this works. Go to Products, Add New to add in your first product. Start with something simple that doesn't have any extra options. For example, for an apparel shop, you might start with a hat that only comes in one colour and size. For the bakery, I'll start with a simple yet classic French baguette. First, add in the product name. Next is the description. Be as descriptive as possible to help people find your products when searching online. You can use basic formatting such as bold text and paragraph alignment in your description. Scroll down past the product data to the product short description. We'll get back to the product data option shortly. Add a short description of your product. This will show at the top of the product page. It should be concise, but at the same time entice the viewer to take a closer look. Scroll back up to the product categories. Product categories help customers navigate to relevant products while they shop your site. Go ahead and click Add New Category. Type your category name and click Add a new category once more. Great, now this category will always appear on the list here and you can use it for other products in the future as needed. Another way to add categories is via the Categories tab. Under Products, Command or Control click Categories to open into a new tab. Type in a name. When you create your categories here, you can add other details such as a description and an image. Then click Add New Category. Repeat this for each category that you add. You can click to edit any category here. Bulk manage your categories from here. Below the Categories section is the Tags section. Product tags are keywords that show up in your website search and are generally more specific than categories. The same tag may fall within different categories. The process of adding and managing tags is similar to categories. Type in the tag name and click Add New Tag. In the case of the bakery, I'll add the wholemeal and gluten-free tags so that searchers can find all of the products with either of these tags at one time. Let's go back to our product, click Save Draft to refresh the categories, and as you can see the ones that we've added now appear here. We can now apply them as needed to our future products. If you want to apply a product tag we added, begin typing it, and then select it when it appears in the drop-down. Choose as many as is relevant, and you can also add new tags directly from here. Click the X to remove a product tag. Now it's time to add the product data. Our first product is a basic product with no extra options, so under product data, leave it on the default of simple product. Later in the course, we'll discuss downloadable products as well as more complex products. Start with the regular price in the general tab. This is the normal price of the product. If the product is on sale, enter that below. You can even schedule the sale price to go live and end at a designated time. Next we are presented with the tax options. Please note that this section will only appear if you have enabled and configured your tax options. We can first of all set the tax status, and then the tax class. Click the Inventory tab next. Here you can enter an SKU number. This is optional, but a good idea to use as a reference number for your product, in case its name changes in the future. Below that is the stock area, where you can manage your stock. If you decide to enable it, you can add in the available quantity, allowing WooCommerce to keep track of and note when a product is out of stock. You can choose whether or not to allow back orders, as well as when you want to be notified by email from WooCommerce when inventory is low. If you would like to limit a product to one per order, Check Sold Individually. Let's skip down to the Advanced tab. We'll go back to some of the other options a bit later. In the Advanced tab, we have an option to include a purchase note. This note will be sent to the customer only after this specific product is sent. You can add a value for menu order if you'd like this product to show up before the default order. 
Last is the option to enable reviews. I highly recommend leaving it enabled to allow your products to gain social proof. Now let's add our product images. The product image here is the main image associated with the product and will display on the shop or archive page. Click set product image to choose this image. Make sure to choose a high quality image that focuses on the product. At the same time, be sure to keep the image size small. To learn more about image optimization, check out the dedicated lesson in our performance course. The image name should describe the product, with each word separated by a dash. This will help search engines find and display your products in search results. Add in the alt text to display on screen readers and whenever the image cannot be displayed. You can also add the title which will display when the mouse cursor is hovered over the image. Now let's add some more images to the product gallery. These can be other images of your product, such as from different angles, close-ups and in use, depending on your product. Click Add Product Gallery Images to add them. For the baguette, I'll use a few different angles, as well as images showing a close-up and the texture. All of my images are the same dimensions for consistency. Hold down Command or Control to select more than one image. Then click Add to Gallery. The selected gallery image is preview here. If you'd like to change the display order, you can drag them like this. To remove an image, just click the X. OK, great, we've now added in all the product data, so click Publish at the top of the page and Command or Control and click View Product. What you see here is the main layout and display of a simple product. We have not yet applied any styling or display settings, but you can see the title, price, add to cart button, as well as other information that we've added to the product. We'll style this soon, but first go ahead and add in the rest of your products, data and images in the same manner that we did for the first product. Next I'll walk you through creating a digital product, as well as a variable product. Great, now that we've added the rest of our products, let's go ahead and create a downloadable product. Open any product you'd like to make downloadable. I'll use this ebook cookbook. Scroll down to the product data, select virtual, since the item does not need to be shipped and downloadable. Notice that the shipping tab disappears and there are new options below. Click add file, upload and select your file and click Insert File URL. Go ahead and name the file. If you'd like, you can add restrictions to your download. You can limit how many times a customer can download the file, as well as if and when the download link should expire. The customer will receive a link to download the file after purchasing. Click Update, and that's all there is to creating a downloadable product. Next, we'll take a look at a variable product. Open a product that will have at least one variation. An example could be t-shirts that come in several sizes and or colours, or cosmetics that have multiple options for skin types and or product size. For the bakery, I'll choose these gourmet donuts since they come in several flavours and dietary options. Scroll down to product data and select variable product. You'll notice that the pricing information disappears and the Variations tab now appears. But before we can set up variations, we'll need to first add attributes to the product. Click the Attributes tab and click Add Custom Attribute. A custom attribute is an attribute that will be used for this product only. Let's name it Flavor. Then add each variation value separated by the pipe symbol. In this case, I'll enter three delicious flavour options. Select Use for Variations and click Save Attributes. Now go back to the Variations. Click Go next to Add Variation. Next to any flavour, I'll click to expand it. And now we can add the pricing and any other information that appears below. These will be the default settings for any variation. Let's now preview our changes. 
And as you can now see, there's an option to choose the donut flavor, and the image and price remain constant for each option. If you'd like different content to appear depending on the variation, such as specific images or pricing, you'll need to set up each variation separately. To do this, go back to the product, variations. I'll click any flavor and change it to the first variation from the dropdown. Now add the image and description for this variation. If you'd like to update the content for each variation, you can select Create Variations from All Attributes, and you'll see that the remaining variations have all been added in one shot. Alternatively, if you only want to make changes to select variations, you can create them individually, as we did before with the Add Variation option. Now I'll add an image. I'll set a different price for this flavor variation. Add in any other relevant information below. Now repeat for any remaining variations. Let's now preview our changes. You can see the main product image and price range. Choosing a flavor switches the image, description, and price where relevant. In the event that no image was added to a variation, it will default to the main product image. OK, our product entries are coming along nicely. But what if you need to set other options for a product? No problem. You can do that too. Let's see them now, and while we're at it, let's see how to create a global attribute for options that you will need again with other products. In this case, I'll add an option for dietary options because I'd like to offer this option on some of the other bakery items. Go back to your product screen, and under Products, click Attributes. Type in a name for the attribute and then click Add New Attribute. Click Configure Terms, add in a variation, and then click Add New. Do this for each variation. Go back to the Variable Product and Attributes. From the drop down, select the attribute that you've just added and click Add. Select Use for Variations. Click Select to choose all of the options. In the event that you don't want to use all of the variations for this product, just click the X. And now save the attributes. Now go over to Variations, and you'll see the new attribute has been added to each variation. Now Update and Preview. A second option has been added to the Gourmet Donuts. Customers can now choose both the flavor and dietary option. And now you know how to add the most common types of products to your store. WooCommerce has several other plugins which you can use to add other types of products, such as bundled products and subscriptions. If you require these for your store, you can search for them in the plugin repository and add them to your site. Next up, we'll take a look at the theme builder and how we can use it to create our WooCommerce shop templates.